The original version of Pixar's Luca was going to be very different, from a huge monster movie ending to a quest for magical tokens and a missing John Ratzenberger cameo. Yippee Kai, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing the alternate ending of Luca and some of the scenes and storylines you never got to see. Spoilers ahead, of course, so take care. Before Pixar's filmmakers landed on the beautiful bittersweet ending for Luca we see in the final film, the movie's finale was originally going to be more of a giant monster battle. This particular story leaned much more heavily than the final film into the division between humans and sea monsters, setting them up as two diametrically opposed factions or worlds, which director Enrico Casarosa compared in an interview with Slash Film to the divide between the Capulets and Montagues in Romeo and Juliet. Although in the final movie the townspeople of Porto Rosso are still fearful of sea monsters, with a reward being set up after a recent sighting of one, it sounds like in the earlier version this confrontation between the two worlds was going to be even more intense, with the original plan being for Alberto to transform into a kraken, an enormous mythical sea monster that looks like a humongous octopus or squid, with Luca then standing up to defend and protect his friend. However, as Casarosa told Cinema Blend, a conversation he had with his own real-life best friend friend ended up inspiring him to completely retool the film's finale. That movie-changing chat was all about their own friendship and how good friends help each other grow, but eventually that often takes them down very different paths in life, leading to bittersweet goodbyes. For Casa Rosa, that's something he's experienced several times in his own life, having left his home in Italy for America to pursue his dreams of animation and filmmaking. And when he and his team put those ideas together, storyboarded them and added composer Dan Roma's score, they were hit by just how emotional it was. So the film dropped its colossal kraken and, as Casarosa told Slash Film, focused instead on a kid's world and stakes and goals. With this kind of slightly strange and silly idea, we're going to ride into the sunset with a Vespa. Curiously enough, in the final film, there is actually an Easter egg to a giant sea monster movie though, via the poster for the Disney adaptation of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which features an attack by a giant squid. And there's also an illustration of a giant kraken-like creature wrapping its tentacles around a boat on one of the fishermen's maps. Over the years, krakens have popped up in quite a few well-known movies, including The Clash of the Titans, The Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, and Hotel Transylvania 3 Summer Vacation. Which is funny, as the protagonists of both that movie and Luca are monsters, and both films are set during the summer holidays. In fact, the kraken plays a key part in the ending of the third Transylvania movie, and given that film came out in 2018 while Luca was still in development at Pixar, I wonder if that might have also influenced the decision to change Luca's finale. When Casa Rosa first came up with the idea for the movie, Luca and Alberto were not the only young sea monsters who featured in the story. There was actually a group of them, giving the film what the director has called a Stand By Me vibe, referring to the 1980s coming-of-age classic. In fact, one of those additional sea monster friends was called Chicho, a name you'll probably recognise from the final film, as his original role was completely rewritten to make him one of Bully Boy Ercole's human sidekicks instead. And there's a lot of lovely concept art by Chris Sazaki, which shows the original trio of Luca, Alberto and Chicho getting up to various hijinks in both their sea monster and human forms. Judging by Chicho's build in the final film, it looks like this character here was a sea monster version of him. It's interesting that sea monster Chicho had crab claws for arms and carried around a shell on his back like a hermit crab. And a remnant of this original idea made its way into Luca's surname Paguro, which means hermit crab in Italian. As for Julia, it seems a human girl was part of the group of male sea monster friends even in early versions of the story. However, the filmmakers did experiment with when exactly to reveal the truth to her that her new pals were not actually human. You can see in the Art of Luca book that at one point she learned about them earlier as she goes swimming with them in their sea monster form. And in another scene, she's with all three original sea creature friends, and they have their tails showing as they sit down for dinner with Massimo. In the end, Casarosa and his team decided that prolonging that reveal till later in the film added more tension and drama, as producer Andrea Warren told website io9. In what would have been another major change to the story, originally the kids went on a much bigger quest that involved magical tokens, and their intention was to become completely human. The final film certainly has shades of The Little Mermaid, with Alberto collecting items from the human world and Luca being forbidden from going to the surface, but it sounds like this original plot point would have made the film feel even more like Pixar's The Little Merman. 
Likewise, Luca's original storyline, where the young sea monsters set out to become fully fledged human boys, also has a ring about it of the Italian children's novel Pinocchio, which was adapted into a movie by Disney. And there are actually several Easter eggs to the wooden marionette who desperately wanted to become a real human boy in the Finnish Pixar film. However, Casarosa says that storyline got too complicated and he preferred a more lyrical take on things, so he decided to strip everything back to what he realised should be the heart of the film, the friendship between Luca and Alberto, and he made those two children the centre of the story. Further work, of course, was still needed on the characters because, as Luke is a bit introverted and very quiet, Casarosa found that in some earlier versions of the script it was difficult for the audience to understand him. So, subconsciously inspired by his love of Fellini's film Ace and a Half and its dream sequences, for the final film Casarosa decided to take us literally inside Luca's head by showing us his daydreams. Another thing that evolved during development was where the sea monsters lived. Originally they were hiding in plain sight, in their own town on an island, as you can see in this concept art here from the Art of Luca book. And another piece of concept art shows how the monster island was shaped like an octopus. However, Casarosa and his team decided that they only needed one town, so they just let the monsters be well hidden instead. They did still keep the idea of an island though, but just as the location of Alberto's tower, and there may be a trace of the original concept also, in the way that one of the fishermen is afraid to go there. Do we really need to fish near the island? You worry too much. I don't know. What if the old stories are true? Some other interesting alternatives that were considered for the monster world are these illustrations of an underwater town that's similar in look to the human town, and which appears to be situated almost directly underneath Porto Rosso. Again, there appears to be a remnant of this original idea on the back of the playing card that Luca finds, which is the picture of a town in the top half, which is reflected in the lower half. There was also an alternative to Alberto's tower for his collection of human objects, in the form of a secret hideout inside an upside down semi-submerged shipwreck. The entrance was via the water, with a dry area in the hull above where Alberto stored his who's it's and what's it's, and it looks like the boat was located in a cave, again giving it a bit of a Little Mermaid vibe. A regular Pixar feature that didn't make it into the final movie is a cameo by John Ratzenberger. Before Soul, the Cheers actor had voiced at least one character in every Pixar film. In Soul, Ratzenberger didn't voice any character, however the movie's co-director Kemp Powers said that a tribute was made to him by a non-speaking character who appears briefly in the subway. As for Luca, Casarosa confirmed that Ratzenberger is not in the film, and said on Twitter that he hoped to start a new tradition of having the good dinosaur director Peter Soane voice a character in each new Pixar movie. In Luca, Soane is the voice of Chicho. Well, my head not kinda you, hurt. Chicho. I'm curious as to whether Ratzenberger has now retired from Pixar films for good, or if his absence from Soul and Luca is related to the pandemic as both films were completed during that time. Intriguingly, I found an interesting old man sea monster character in some concept art that I wonder if he might have played. And if you want to discover all the Pixar Easter eggs which did make it into Luca, tap here to watch my full Things You Missed video. And my next video will be all the incredible deleted scenes from Raya and the Last Dragon, which I'll link here and in the video description too. And if you want to check out more of the gorgeous concept art from Luca, there's also links in the description where you can get the Art of Luca book. So do you wish any of these deleted scenes or story ideas had been in the final movie? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, then do like and subscribe, it's hugely appreciated. Next, you can tap left to learn all the hidden messages and meanings in the ending of Luca, including what Alberto's secret catchphrase really means. Or tap right for another Disney deleted scenes video. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!